Hi, it's Rachel with Shades of Blue Interiors, and I'm going to do a quick tutorial today on how to hand paint details on a piece of furniture. This is a technique I like to do a lot to make a somewhat normal or boring piece of furniture kind of stand out a little bit, and it's pretty easy. Uh, so I figured I'd just show what you need and how to do a couple of the brush strokes that are commonly used and then quickly show how to do something like this. I've left one part of this, of this little chest unfinished so I can show you guys how to do it, but this is, this is an example of like a lot of hand painting that can be done. Um, sometimes I don't do this much, sometimes I just do little details. I'm sure many of you have seen the bird and branch designs that I've painted on dressers and pretty much I use the same brush strokes that I'll show you in just a few minutes. So the first thing you need to know is supplies. This is very minimal supplies. Uh, I would say it's worth it to go out and buy some brushes. And I bought these at Michael's for like, with a coupon, it cost me like three bucks. They are a set of four golden Taquan Filbert brushes, sizes two, four, six, and eight. So two is the smallest, four is the next size. You guys probably can't even see this. Uh, six and then eight is the largest size. But I normally just stick with probably the two smaller ones. Now Filbert is just uh, describing, is the name of, of this, the shape of the brush. So they taper to kind of a rounded point. That's a filbert. There's flat top brushes that would also work really well for this, but I just kind of prefer the rounded tapered point. That is what they look like. And when you turn, like, you turn it sideways, you get a very thin, it's very thin. Okay, so you'll need brushes, You'll need some paint. You can use acrylic. I use uh, just Annie Sloan chalk paint. I like the body that it has. I think it it works really well for hand painting furniture. And then when you distress it, you can get some of the bumpiness of hand paint that is typical of hand painting to be less noticeable. You can kind of sand it away gently without completely taking off what you've painted or having pieces chip off and whatnot. So, and then you're also gonna want a rag and I get mine a little bit moist just because chalk paint dries fairly quickly in small amounts. So on the brush, sometimes you'll get at the very base of it some dried chunkies and I'll just like to clean it off occasionally. So now I'm gonna show you on this scrap piece of wood. The first stroke that's most commonly used is the comma stroke. So I always try to hold my brushes as perpendicular as I can to my surface but I hold the brush, instead of holding it like straight up and down, I'm holding it a little bit of an angle. And you push, push down so you get like a good, and then you slowly lift up as you pull to this side. And that is a comma stroke. That's most used when doing like leaves or flower petals or whatever. You don't have to have it go off to the side, you can have it go straight down. You can have them go in different directions. This is the most common one that I use. That's the comma stroke. Then there is the straight line and you don't wanna have very much paint on your brush when you're doing the straight line down. You're just going to, and, and, and do it quickly. Don't, don't hesitate because it's harder to keep a steady hand. So you just, don't push very hard and just do it really quickly like that. Okay, so then the next uh, brush stroke is a, I'm gonna move this over a little bit, is an S stroke. So you're gonna hold it at about a 45 degree angle and you start like, almost like if you've ever done calligraphy, it's similar. So you start like this and then you push and then you pull up again. So I kind of ran out of paint in that last one, so I'll just do it again. You start and then you push going the opposite direction 
and then you pull back. You can always start in the middle. You want to finish off and, and fill in what you missed, but that's an S stroke. Then there's the U stroke, and again, this is this is all about applying the right amount of pressure. You start thin, you go thicker, and then you pull up again, lifting slowly lifting the brush up. So you're gonna go down and then and then up. So that's a U stroke where it kind of is tapered and thick in the middle and then tapered again. Before you just randomly, you notice that I have the design already kind of, this is, I just used my good sidewalk chalk actually. So you just draw the design that you want and that gives you a kind of a guideline. It doesn't have to be exact, so. So the thickest part is going to be out, I'm going to be bringing it in. This is something that I would recommend practicing quite a bit before you get started on a piece of furniture. Get out while you're watching TV or, I don't know, listening to your kids read or help them with homework. You can be sitting here practicing your brush strokes on a piece of paper or a scrap piece of wood. still need to wait for it to dry and I will lightly distress it with a sanding sponge just to some of the areas that have a lot more paint it'll make it so they're less bumpy. It's really not hard. The doing the rest of this drawer probably took me like 10 minutes total just because I've got used to the brush strokes I'm doing. I, I've had practice but uh, once you get the hang of it you kind of get in a rhythm and it goes pretty quickly as long as you have your design out. So. Um, I hope I was able to make this whole process seem a little bit less intimidating and that you maybe try hand painting some of your furniture in the future. So thanks for watching and have a great day.